Back then when Canon released the C70, right? It was, it's actually a Super Ted 5 sensor, same as the um, C300 Mach 3 um, sensor, right? And Canon released the Speed Booster that converted that sensor to a full frame sensor, right? Now, interestingly, the C400 is an RF. I'm sure you know where I'm going. You could read the lines, right? And the Speed Booster, right, that converts the Super 35 to a full frame. Well, if we take that same Speed Booster and put it on a full frame, would it convert it to an LF? Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Daniel, if you're coming here for the first time. Well, in recent news, um, the C400 was just released and we were lucky enough to get our hands on the production unit right it was just fair to see how it fared against the dual gain iso sensor from the c300 mark iii that's a very lovely camera that's in super 35 against the bsi sensor that's actually a um, backside illuminated sensor that's actually available in c400 you get and all the offerings that they have so this conversation it's a lot more technical so permit me because i had to like make a whole lot of notes to be able to keep a lot of things together so that we can actually have this conversation you get so first of all right uh, the bsi sensor has several benefits against the uh, against the c300 mark 3 you get first of all it's actually a super 35 sensor that's available in the c300 mark 3 and the c400 has a 6k full frame 35 millimeter sensor you get moving on to that right the c400 part of the specs has like the um triple base iso that has been like the wave of the town right also the mod modularity of how it has not been like a little bit of it's almost like you took a knife and sliced out a 10 percent out of the c300 by mid weight dense so in terms of weight i do not think they are far off but in terms of the size it's become a lot more boxy and more riggable and also available on it is the new rf mount that's actually now line up from the ef and pl to the whole rf lineup that we have available on the camera now what's interesting to know is that um some of the perks of the bsi sensor is actually the ability to be able to increase the light gathering efficiency which is why it's backside illuminated by bringing the photodiodes closer to the um, sensor lenses that's just below the micro lenses that are available on the sensor which increases the signal to noise ratio on the um on the camera and that's where the whole um triple base iso comes from because remember iso is applied after the raw data which is actually the gain and electricity gain that's actually piped into the camera as opposed to what that is so in the previous sensor what the camera does is actually capture two different um, um images right at different amplification levels and actually combine them to produce a single image and one prioritizes saturation in the highlight and the other one prioritizes noise and shadows and this actually works hand in hand to be able to improve the entire dynamic range that is available on c300 mark 3 you get but if you compare the c400 now the redesigning of shifting the photodiodes from the back plane of the sensor that's behind the wiring if you look at the sensor diagram right brings the photodiodes way forward which makes them have more access to light gathering capabilities that makes it a lot more cleaner that accounts for the triple base iso that's now available on the camera which allows us to shoot in um, um, 800 native um 3200 native and 12800 and still keep like the same signal to noise ratio you get because the light because the photodiode is now actually um, closer to the micro lenses that's on the sensor design improving the light gathering capabilities of the sensor which now makes it a lot more um, healthy in terms of the signal to noise ratio department so post gain of the iso you get like more benefits you get and if you look at the camera some of the features i actually uh, find fascinating about the c400 is the flexibility of how it can actually morph from um, something that could work in a live event to independent cinema right or when used as a b cam to your iris and other stuff you get because you could have interesting shoots like civil war did something interesting whereby they use very multiple camera scenarios you get they had like a, a red that was in the film that was used for most of the stills that were shot we saw in civil war most of the motion shots were done on the dji and most of the main camera work was done on like a, a venice you get and like 
they meshed all through the color science to be able to like make it look as one. And when you look at that film, it was not shot on just one camera. It was shot on myriads of cameras. And this is the new form of thinking that's beginning to take, uh, take on the visual landscape. Not like we put everything in one brand because these are tools and as creators, we use different tools for different spaces. And somehow your main camera could still be like maybe like IR35 or whatever your choices are or your main hero um, top of the shelf cameras. And this could be like your C camera that rules the night because of the triple base ISO you may not need um, as much lighting firepower when you rate your camera at 3200 to be able to like re-expose most of those night scenes but working hand in hand with colorists and merging the color science of different cameras you can be able to like put everything together to come into one bucket from design and testing and um, whatnot that's actually available within the camera so now one of the um, more interesting thing that's not available because um, that's not available on the um, C300 Mark III is the fact that now it's now a 6K sensor that downsamples most of the imagery. So we have two things that's working in favor for the C400. One of them is like the 6K sen sensor that downsamples to a 4K, which actually gives you a cleaner signal to noise ratio, which you experience in the C500 when you actually shoot in 4K because it's taking all that 6K and actually bringing it down, right? But now, because the photodiodes have not been lifted from the bottom of the sensor now to the top, the signal to noise ratio is a lot more healthy. And I can see this in the hands of also in the vein of flexibility, documentary filmmakers that actually go to places whereby they do not know what the light package would be or where they would meet or what they would be interviewing or what they'll be walking into, right? This could actually become like a savior to be able to actually having those vulnerable moments captured in very clean ways you get and so we it basically addresses like a couple of verticals you get because you can also use it as, as indie commercials to on as an indie commercial camera based on how small it is and how you can rig it and the kind of lenses you can put on it because the rf mount also opens up a world of lenses you get um, Canon has like the PL adapter that allows you to access your entire lineup of PLs and if you have old EF glass you could also benefit from some of the autofocus that comes in from the lens you get and but that's not available on the DGO sensor for now it's just the C300 Mark III and the C400 that's like actually on the table that we could actually compare with. One thing I forgot to include is that um, the C400 screen now has the touchscreen capability of the C70. And this is interesting because it just makes accessing the functions of your menus and recording modes and all the other modes that's available in the quick menu without diving too deep in the menu a lot more easier. And it makes the camera a lot more programmable, giving you access to raw capabilities and also several flavors of codec at the breadth of a finger touch, as opposed to digging through the deep menu that's usually um, the bane of the entire old system. And this is quite interesting because it could really come in handy in a pinch. And you can now even scrub your playbacks and get like points rather than use the for joystick button fast forward and pause and like it used to be before and you can swipe for previous and next clip. So this is quite really handy feature I forgot to mention. Now we continue. Now the most interesting part of this is the fact that because of virtual productions that have been coming in, right, um, the C400 has also been designed in that vein to be able to take on virtual production. So you can see on several visual verticals from commercial to documentary to um, live event to indie work or even major feature work, how the camera can actually plug into the niche. So it's actually Canon's most interesting hybrid that's placed on a relatively cheap bracket. I said relatively because all our currencies and economical situations are not the same, you get. But it's actually a very, very interesting tool in the space and in the offerings whereby we have other camera offerings that are available and other manufacturers that have actually like put out discounts on new pricings on, on their cameras, you get. So all of this just adds up to how you can actually um, work within the zone of what's available and what the camera offers to be able to um, transform your imagery you get. Um, as to low light and dynamic range, well, we'll still get to like put out some footages and do some tests and I still get to like play more with it on certain projects to be able to understand the entire camera and the workflow and I would come up with like more um, thoughtful review as that's not just based on technical specification that's listed on the paper. Back then when Canon released the C70, right, it was, it's actually a Super 35 sensor, same as the um, C300 Mark III um, sensor, right? And Canon released the speed booster that converted that sensor 
to a full frame sensor, right? Now, interestingly, the C400 is an RF. I'm sure you know where I'm going. You could read the lines, right? And the speed booster, right, that converts the Super 35 to a full frame. Well, if we take that same speed booster and put it on a full frame, would it convert it to an LF? Now, that's an interesting video would make next and we'll get to like test it out and see what's available and see what happens in the image and see what's offering because everything just adds up to choices and tools that are available to us for our visual language you get so until next time on the next video please do like and subscribe if this video was useful to you and please improvise adapt and overcome